So, uh, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to this talk. Thank you for coming. Uh, so, my name is Einar. Uh, I'm a Norwegian. I work for the Norwegian Public Broadcaster in Norway. Uh, so, we provide television and radio for Norwegian public. Uh, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the agenda for this talk is, is this thing. Um, so, this is a square limit uh, woodcut, or it's a uh, it's a picture of a square limit, uh, which is a woodcut uh, made by Asher. And uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, reproduce something that, that looks a little bit like, like this picture. Uh, this isn't... Uh, the ideas I'm going to show you are not my ideas. Uh, they were first presented uh, in a paper in 1982, written by Peter Henderson, and then he wrote a subsequent version of that paper in 2002, which is the paper I'm basing this talk on. And a little bit of inspiration for this talk, why sort of the, the road here. Uh, I was sitting uh, listening to the keynote uh, at Lambda Days in Krakow this year, and there was a very interesting keynote to me, uh, talking about some influential uh, papers on functional programming. And one of the papers they talked about was this functional geometry paper by Peter Henderson. And as I was sitting there, I was sort of reminiscent that uh, I'd heard about this paper once before when I was uh, reading uh, the structure and interpretation of computer programs and also wat watching the videos that are online, uh, where they walk through this sort of Henderson-Escher example. And they don't really draw the square limit, but they draw this thing with a, a stick figure instead. And so I got to thinking that, okay, maybe, maybe it would be an interesting exercise to sort of walk through and see if I could implement these ideas myself using some tool that I was familiar with. So um, the functional programming language that I'm most familiar with is F sharp. And uh, so that's, that's what we're going to use today. Uh, basically what I did for this talk was take uh, the example of the safe stack, which is uh, Suave, Azure, uh, Fable, and Elmish and sort of rip out everything I didn't need, and then I put in my stuff, and then we have what we have here. But it's, it's sort of an important point that I'm not going to explain these tools, I'm just going to use them. They're very powerful tools, um, but yeah. So rather than focusing on, on sort of the mechanics and works, workings of F-sharp or Fable, uh, what I really want to focus on is abstraction um, and sort of the power you get from abstractions that are made in a particular way, which is that they uh, are composable. So you can take two instances of some abstraction and you end up sort of um, with something that you can use just as easily as what you started with. Right. So, and, and what is sort of the core abstraction? The core abstraction that we're going to use and that Henderson defined was that a picture uh, is going to be not a collection of bits or pixels or something like that, but rather as a function. So basically the data that we're going to work with are functions. So most of the <coughs> code that we'll um, be writing is going to be higher order functions because we're going to manipulate pictures and then, well, you're going to have to pass a function in then and, and manipulate it and get a function out. So a picture is just a function from some sort of bounding box into a rendering of some sort. And, uh, well, let's, let's take a look at it. Oh, it's the wrong file. This is the correct file. So, you should be able to see the same basic abstraction then. Uh, a picture, <laughs> and a picture <coughs> takes a box and produces a rendering. A rendering is just a shape or a list of shapes and some styling. Uh, don't worry too much about the styling. Um, it's just sort of how, how wide is my pen going to be and stuff like that. Not ter terribly interesting. Uh, the box is more interesting. So let's, let's look at the box. The box is made out of three vectors, A, B, and C. And uh, that's the lines that you should be seeing here. So this would be uh, the A vector, the red one. This is going to be the horizontal vector. It's going to be B. And then you have the purple one, which is C. And these sort of implicitly uh, define a box, which is uh, what you get with uh, those dotted lines there. 
So that's the box that I've given to my picture. Now the interesting thing is that the picture itself is uh, a little bit magical uh, because it uh, sort of self-adapts then. If, it give, if I give it a, a different box, it's going to render differently. So I can sort of manipulate my vectors, something like this. I can move this a little bit. And now hopefully if things work. So this is Fable doing some sort of hot module reload thing. Uh, I don't know how it works, but it's, it's, it's kind, of, kind of nice. Uh, so so the, uh, the picture uh, adapts to a different kind of box. And uh, well, I could also give it a different kind of figure. So I had the letter F before. But I can swap that very easily uh, with the, this stick man that uh, was used in the SIGP lectures. And that sort of gives us an idea that we can do transformations on this just by manipulating the vectors or uh, twisting on the boxes. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's, let's do that. So we're going to define some simple transformations first, and then we're going to start sort of combining things into, into bigger pictures. And the first one I want to do is I want to turn this thing uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And the way I can do this is if I had uh, my red vector pointing here instead, and my purple vector pointing up here, and then the pink one up there, that should sort of do the trick. So I, I have my specification here, basically. So let's see. Right. So I want something that can turn a picture. And of course, it's going to produce a picture. And a picture is a function from box to a rendering. So I could start with something like this, a function. And basically, I could, I could just create, like, if I had a function that would transform my box for me, uh, basically all I would have to do is pass this, this new box to my uh, original picture, and that's going to be my new picture. Or sorry, that's going to be, this is going to be my new picture. So when I give it a box, I'm going to turn that box and then call the original picture with that turned box. So I'm going to need this turn box function then. And if you're not familiar with sort of destructuring or pattern matching in F-sharp, this is basically just me picking apart the box, and then I'm binding these variables A, B, and C to the relevant parts inside the box. Right? And then I can basically just follow my specification. I think I have my specification here. So A is going to be A plus B instead. This is going to be my new box. B is just going to be, well, B is going to be C, right? And let's see, C is going to be minus B. This is my new box. And let's see, I can pictures here. But I can simplify this a little bit. I, I wrote this in a sort of cumbersome way. So I could instead just write something like this, right? And then the C sharp, uh, F sharp compiler rather, uh, is telling me that I could simplify this even further. So I'm going to do a um, function composition here because what I'm doing now is I have a function from a box to a box and then I have a function from a box to a rendering. I can sort of weld them together to just be a function from a box to a rendering directly. Um, so that's going to be, let's see. That's my box to box function. So that's box to box. And then I have a picture which is box to rendering. I can, po can compose those using this compose operator. So this is going to be my turn picture now. Let's see. Uh, let's see if it works. 
So I'm going to try to, what's going on here is I'm passing, well, I don't know if you're familiar with this pipe forward thing. Um, so if I have, um, let's see, a function double that takes an integer and just doubles it, I, there are sort of two ways I can call that uh, in F-sharp, or multiple, but one would be to do something like this, but I could also do this instead, which is basically just piping the argument into the function. So if you're a C-sharp programmer, you do this all the time with link. It's a similar thing. <coughs> so let's see. Let's see if it works. It takes a little bit of time, but so. Now I have turned my uh, picture once. Uh, but I could do it multiple times, obviously, uh, and I can compose things again, right? So uh, this turn function now is uh, a function from a picture to a picture, and I can weld those together to a new function that turns it twice. So this should hopefully now move this red arrow up to the top there. Yeah. And... Um, Just for convenience, I think we're going to uh, convenience. We're going to um, generalize this a little bit. So, in general, I'm going to want to have a function that allows me to sort of create a function uh, that composes some function with itself multiple times, so n times. Now, well, what should we do if n is zero? If I apply a function zero times, if I turn my picture zero times, that's going to be I would just like to get my picture back at that point. So I'm going to use the identity function, which just gives you back whatever you give it. But um, in the other case, I'm going to compose my function with whatever function I get from calling myself recursively. So let's see. And that means I can define a new function here. Oh which allows me to turn something n times, right? Let's see if we can use that. So this should now turn my, my f letter three times. And I didn't define sort of a convenience method for turning the box, but well, this is just the same thing, right? And let's see, did I, yeah, yeah. And of course, uh, well, if I do it once more, we should be all the way around, right? Okay, good. Moving on, uh, flip is my next uh, basic operation. Flip is very simple, so I'm just going to sort of flip it on its side. Uh, So it's going to be sort of a mirroring of things. So flip box, uh, wrong function, or wrong file. Uh, flip is going to be, well, there's going to be a sort of a pattern here, right? So I, I define this simple transformation just uh, transforming the boxes. Uh, flip box. A plus B, so I'm moving it uh, again uh, to the sort of southeast corner. Uh, but then I want the sort of the, the pink vector to go the other way. And C is, uh, just remains intact. And let's see. Yeah, I already updated the, the flip slide. So hopefully if this compiles, and of course, if I flip it back, what's going to happen then? Well, I can flip twice, right? Times two flip. <coughs> I didn't update the box now, but yeah, you get the point. So I could do this too, <coughs> just to, to ensure that this fits what I drew. Okay, flip. Um, and now here we have sort of the uh, 
The third basic transformation that we're going to do, this is called TOS. Uh, I think it's called ROT 44, uh, 45 or something in the original paper, but I, I, it resembles tossing things up in the air. So I called it TOS instead. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go directly to doing this here. Now I need my specification because this is a little bit harder. There's more, more stuff going on, but still just manipulating uh, these, uh, this box. I think it's easier to understand what's going on just by, by, by looking at what happens, basically. Oh, it's not going to be called toss, it's going to be called toss box. And again, I just compose it with my picture. Uh, let's see. I need to update my slide also. So tossing the figure up into the air. Actually, uh, to see clear what's going on, I'm going to draw the original box also. So let's see if this works. And it doesn't work. Excellent. It didn't find the toss box function for whatever reason. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Toss. So pictures. This is going to be toss. And uh, let's see. Boxes. This should be toss box. I'm just going to try to get it to reload, basically. Sometimes the sort of uh, the ordering of when I save things uh, mess up the the uh, reloading, and now I, I broke it again. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Actually, uh, let's see if I can just get it to. I cannot get it to reload. This is a bit annoying. For whatever reason, it's not. Let's see. Mm. Here we are. Uh, sorry about that. Um, Moving on, uh, that's the third and final basic transformation we're going to do. Now we're going to try to create uh, larger pictures. Uh, so this is above. It's going to place one picture on top of the other picture. Let's look at that uh, above. So I'm going to have an above function, and it's going to take two pictures. So I have a picture of an F and a picture of an N, and I'm going to try to put the F on top of the N. And, well, so it's going to, actually, I'm going to create sort of a um, more flexible version that allows me to specify how much room I'm going to give to the upper uh, picture and how much is going to be for the lower. So two pictures. And obviously, it's going to produce a picture, so it's going to be a function from some box. And then I'm going to have to work out, OK, how much of a fraction is going to be for the first picture and how much is going to be for the second one. Uh, so M is going to be my uh, sort of uh, part for the first picture. And then this is now going to give me the fraction for the first. And then it's going to be my 1 minus F for, for the second picture, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my, the box I'm given into two boxes. And then I'm going to draw the first picture in the first box and the second picture in the second box. Let's see. So box. So two boxes. 
um, a top box and a bottom box and I'm going to return both. Uh, what are these going to look like? Well, the top one, I'm going to have to sort of move that on top of the, of, uh, of the bottom one. So it actually, maybe, maybe it's easier to, to uh, define this one first. So this should be now, this, I don't have to move this at all, but I have to scale it. Uh, so I have to shrink it in the sort of vertical di uh, direction. And it's not going to be F because that's for the top box. So it's going to be one minus uh, F. Now, correspondingly, I'm going to have to move this one on top of whatever room I gave to the bottom box, and then I'm going to have to scale that one. OK, but I don't have these functions yet. But they're easy to write. So the only thing move does is move the A vector, right? Everything else is unchanged. And I'm moving it vertically, so I'm just multiplying. Now, I don't think I ever showed you, but I define these sort of functions on vectors, which allows me to add them and multiply them by scalars and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. And scale, well, not scale that, whatever that is. <laughs> So not touching that. At this, for this, I just need to sort of scale that one vertical vector, right? And now above is just going to be above ratio where I give uh, for each of those two pictures uh, sort of a weight of one. And this is now a uh, partial application. So if I had like a function add that takes x and y and gives you x plus y, I can sort of create an inc function that's just add one, where I give it uh, the first parameter and not the second one. Right? That's the same thing that's going on here. I'm not giving it any pictures here. <coughs> it just gives me another function. Uh, let's see. It's not happy about this at all, which is probably a sign that I screwed something up then. Well, this is, this is wrong. Um, actually, it's, it's easier perhaps to see what's going on if I, if I draw the boxes again. Right? So if I, if I do this above, then it's going to uh, split it equally, 50% uh, for each. So I can do something like this. So hopefully now it's going to draw the boxes appropriately. So those are the two boxes with me that we produced. Um, yeah, that's above. Uh, I can, well, you know, this ratio thing now gives me the opportunity <coughs> to do something like this. So I'm free to sort of manipulate the amount of space I give to each picture as, I, as I'd like. Above has this sort of companion functions called uh, beside. Uh, so it puts the first picture to the left of the right picture, or the second picture. Let's see, pictures. So beside, very much similar to above. Uh, apart from, of course, it's going to split the box horizontally instead of vertically. And that's also going to be quite similar to what we've done so far. So a left box and a right box and left, right. Now when, when we're putting the first one to the left, we don't have to move it. So this is just going to be scale 
horizontally by a factor of f, and then move horizontally also by a factor of f, and then scaling it. And we know how to write these now. So move horizontally f a. Oh. Move it by following uh, the horizontal axis a little bit along. And then it's scale horizontally. It's not going to touch that. It's just going to scale the horizontal axis. Right. And that's beside, let's see, I didn't call it. So hopefully this now puts the f to the left of the n. OK, what's going on? Please recompile, recompiles, and yeah. Here we are. Um, and now, of course, we're sort of halfway through the talk, and it's like we haven't even seen a fish. How is it, this going to give us Escher? But it's, we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, we're going to start to compose a little bit uh, larger pictures. See, yeah, I want, um, I'm going to create a quartet, and the quartet is going to be uh, composed of four pictures, one up to the northwest, one to the northeast, one to the southwest, and one to the southeast. Uh, so it's going to, well, let's go. Uh, it's not that. It's northeast, southwest, southeast. Oh, well, actually. Uh, let's see, quartet. Well, with the, uh, with the combinators that we have so far, with beside and above, this is going to be very easy. All right. I'm going to call it beside to create a picture that combines the northwest and the northeast picture. And then beside again to combine southwest and southeast, and then put those above each other. And that's, that's basically all there is to it. And let's see, does it compile? It compiles. Did it compile in the correct order? Probably not. I prayed to the demo gods to be kind today, but well, you know, apparently not. So this is now almost the picture that we had in the SIGPI uh, talk, right? So if you remember, this now fits in, in some way. So we, we can try to reproduce that. And uh, well, Of course, this is the obvious transformations that you need to do to, to produce that picture, right? So, uh, yeah. So basically, just turning those two twice and flipping, and there we are. And this is kind of cool. We're starting to see sort of the picture uh, or the, the power of being able to combining these things uh, easily and freely. Uh, so let's let's just explore that a, a little bit further. So I'm going to take my original quartet now and put it inside a quarter. Right. And this gives me a new quartet with well the original quartet a blank and a blank and then another quartet. And uh, let's see what we can do with that. I'm going to define a new sort of just ad hoc combinator that um, creates a quartet with four copies of whatever you give it. Let's see what, what we get if we 
try to apply that twice to what we gave it originally. So, you know, I can keep going with this. It's, uh, it's very flexible in a sense. So there are no sort of artificial constraints saying that, oh, you created a quadrant, I, I, I can't work with that anymore because now it's this complex picture. And of course I can, like, easily let's, let's try to do something like this. Swapping uh, the stick figure George with just the letter F should be sort of very easy. Now I'm going to create uh, something that Henderson calls a no-net. A no-net sounds fancy, but it's uh, just like a quadrant, but it's like a three by three grid. So it's nine pictures, and we're going to—that's sort of the uh, basic structure that we'll use for square limit, right? So it's going to uh, consist of uh, nine parts. So let's look at that no-net. Um, yeah. Of course, I don't have known it defined, so. Now, I could do something very similar to, to quoted here, right? Um, but I'd like to do something uh, a little bit more uh, sort of like generalized. Uh, so I'm going to take uh, a list of pictures, and then I'm going to sort of create a single picture out of all those pictures that I give it, right? Of course, if I, I, if I give, it, give it nothing, that's going to, just going to be a blank picture. If I give it uh, a single picture, that's going to be that picture. The interesting case if, uh, is if I'm given more than one picture, obviously. Right? So now I can use beside. And, and the P here is going to be given a weight of one, obviously. Whereas the other ones need just as much space. So I'm going to give them sort of the size of the list that's remaining. And then I can, well, just call myself recursively. So this is now going to produce a single row from a list of pictures. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for, for columns. <coughs> now, now known that uh, it's kind of easy to I'm just going to create a, a nested list. Uh, and this is basically the most cumbersome part of, of implementing this, is typing all this stuff. Now, for each of <coughs> these sort of inner lists, I'm just going to call row, right? So I'm going to map row over the inner lists. And that gives me a list of pictures. And I'm just going to pass that to column, right? And let's see, again. I'm tired of this. Come on, yeah. So that's, that's our known net. And again, it's, uh, Let's see. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'm going to create another function that takes a single picture and then puts it inside that no net. And then I'm going to try to call that uh, a couple of times. Do you have any sort of intuitions? It's as to what we're going to get now. Hopefully, it's, uh, it's going to be a little bit interesting. So something like that, right? So it composes nicely. <clears throat> and yeah. So now, finally, the fish. So this is um, Henders, uh, or sort of my reproduction of Henderson's reproduction, or Henderson's fish, uh, in, the, in the 2002 paper, at least. Uh, it's not quite an Escher fish, but you know, it, it has uh, some of the same features. And I'm going to create a very simple uh, function that's just going to draw two pictures on top of each other in the same box. 
Uh, yeah, something like that. And I'm going to take one of the original fish and then one where I turn it twice. Let's see how that's going to work out. So P2. <coughs> and again, this is just <coughs> using partial application because it's, it's going to return a function that takes a box and then produces something. And what it produces is just whatever shapes it gets from, or whatever rendering gets from here uh, concatenated uh, with whatever it gets from the second picture, right? Mm. And then let's see. Does it compile? Yeah. And now you sort of appreciate that uh, Escher put some thought into the construction of that fish, right? So it's not just some fish, it's a fish that happens to fit uh, nicely sort of within itself. And yeah, uh, you might wonder if you could sort of generalize this over thing, and, and of course you can. Um, so you could do something like overs, which is taking a list of pictures instead and a box, and then that's just going to be, you're going to take each picture and pass the box to that, and then sort of just collapse that together to a single list of stuff. So this could take now two pictures, uh, five pictures, and draw everything inside the same box. Ah, uh, yeah, let's see, that was over. Now we're sort of working up to get the, the parts that we need to uh, create a square limit using this no net construction, right? And for that we need a T tile and a T tile. Let's see, T tile. It's not so hard to to implement once we have these these combinators. So T tile. Oh, actually, let's just start calling it fish because it's going to be fish all the time. So T tile t creates two additional fish, um, and the way that it does it is that you well you take the original fi fish, you toss it up into the air, and then you flip it. That's going to give you sort of the northern fish in the drawing uh, that we're going to create. And then we take the northern fish and we turn it three times over. And then we can do something like this. Just draw all that stuff inside the same box. And again, come on. Compile in the right order, hopefully. Nothing, right? Let's see. Yeah, there we are. And again, even more appreciation of uh, of the shape that Escher came up with, right? Um, so that's one of our sort of two basic building blocks we need to create these uh, this uh, square limit. So T tile. Quite simple. Uh, U-tile, also very simple shape. Perhaps even simpler, actually. There are just two of these tiles. So we're, we're getting there. The U-tile is... Actually, it uses the same northern fish, but then it creates some other fish. So it's, it creates a, v a west fish, a south fish, and an east fish. And uh, you get all of those just by turning the previous one. And then you can, well, you know, fish n, fish w, something like this. Well, I didn't. I need to call that also. <coughs> Let's see. Come on, be kind. Yeah. And this is the Utah. And now we're finally ready to create sides and corners for our square limit, right? <coughs> so the side, that's going to be sort of the northern part, the western part, the southern part, and the east part of, of the square limit. Where is side? Well, well side is going to be <coughs> a recursive thing. Um, 
let's see what kind of recursive thing it's going to be. So left side. It's going to take a fish, obviously. <coughs> Actually, let's let's start start very simply and. Um, Mm, yeah. So this is what our site is going to look like uh, in the sort of the de degenerate case, uh, which is where we're going to start. So no fancy recursion yet. We'll see if it draws anything at all. Come on. We talked about this. Yeah, so this is sort of the simple case. So this is, this is the t-tile, this is the turn t-tile, and there's nothing on top. But it gets more interesting when we add recursion to it. So, so if n is 1, then it's just going to be that blank case. But if it's not, then we're going to call ourselves recursively. And uh, yeah, let's see. See so if this works. So hopefully it should put sort of instances of itself on top. At least if I can get it to compile. <sighs> yeah. <coughs> and we could sort of keep going, right? To sort of arbitrary uh, number of levels. And a corner, well, is that going to be the corner for a square limit, right? So let's do that. Uh, corner. Ah, so just, let's just, well, we can start with simple. So another recursive function. That's actually going to be recursive both f uh, with respect to the corner and with respect to the side that we're also going to use to construct a corner. So if n is 1, then I'm just going to use two blanks. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to create a corner recursively and the side recursively. Right. And then, well, that's it, I think. I need a uh, the corner is going to, be, I'm going to put that up to the northwest, and then uh, I'm going to put uh, a plain side to the northeast. Uh, oh, let's see, and I'm going to turn the side for the southwest part. And the final thing is just going to be a utile with the four fish. Let's see. Corner. Oh, well, it's not called fish. It's called P here. <clears throat> okay, let's see if it draws anything. Well, kind of boring, right? Because this is just a utile. So no recursion yet. But it, it helps a lot if we, if we add a couple of steps of recursion. Because it sort of elaborates things. So here we go. Let's see what we can do. Um, actually, all the hard work is done. So let's... Let's just define square limit now. Now, <coughs> I'm going to try to not break anything. Let's see, square limit. And I'm going to create a corner. Uh, whoa, that's not what I wanted. And I'm going to create a side. And then I need all of these individual parts. So. Northwest part is just going to be the unchanged corner. Uh, similarly, uh, plane to the north is just going to be the side. But the northeast, well, how can I create sort of the appropriate corner for that? Well, I'm going to have to turn it three times. So three turns. Now for pure west, it's going to be just turning the side once. For the middle part, that's going to be a utile. Uh, for the east thing, I'm going to have to turn the side three times. This should be turning the corner once. 
this should be turning the side twice and this should be turning the corner twice and this is just a known at now it's I don't know why it's complaining uh, let's see yeah I wanted this limit thing let's see if it compiles it does compile. It sometimes takes a little while. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, there we are. Uh, that's uh, Henderson's square limit uh, replica, um, which is kind of cool. Um, I think we have a few minutes, so I'm just going to very quickly add one thing. Uh, is that uh, the fish is nice, but it's not super nice. So we could, you know, let's see. Oh. I cheated a little bit. So in addition to having a box, I can also sort of add a shade or a hue, which is, gives me three kinds of variations of my fish, right? So I have here basically exactly the same code that we saw before but one that also takes into account this multiple colors of the fish. So it's the same fish, but it, I can sort of uh, manipulate the coloring of it. So if I see, well, I can change it, right? So I can, just like I, I can turn the fish, I can also change the coloring of the fish. Right, so let's see. I'm just gonna take, okay. Oh, I didn't define that. For and let's see. Oh, let's see if this works. And it doesn't work. Oh, God. Okay, for whatever reason, it's not understanding. <coughs> ah. Yeah, I should have sort of shifted over a little bit, but apart from that, you should be able to see my three fish. Yeah. And let's see, let's see how that works for, for square limit now. This is going to take even longer, I think, but yeah. And I think we're basically on time. Thanks for coming. Yeah, um, yeah it, it should be possible uh, to get this stuff on, on GitHub. I'll publish the, the repo. So if anyone find it interesting, you can play with it. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah.